It's another year of streaming done, and this time, I'll avoid an introduction and go straight into it. This is the Stream and Review 2018. In 2017, there was a lot of learning, but in 2018, that's where the veteran is born, right? Well, not this time, unfortunately. But one thing I did see was an upward trend on Twitch all around, and a lot of great milestones and improvements. Which brings me to how much I've spent. I coughed up $225.22 on equipment for the stream. This time around, I purchased a webcam adapter, blue screen, lights, and some black sheets to help filter my window lighting. Remember the terrible mic stand from 2017? I decided to use that to hold my webcam instead of having it rest on my monitor, hence the webcam adapter. Suddenly, it's not so terrible. This means it brings my purchases to a grand total of $800.76 on the stream. A hefty investment for sure, but perhaps it will see its worth. And with that out of the way, Here's how I did for the year. I had tons of hours to play a bunch of different games. I ignored my schedule when I deemed it necessary and played so many games in the last half of the year that my backlog on YouTube started to become too big. Compared to 2017, however, I saw a 13% decrease in hours streamed. Up to you if that's a good thing or not. But September and October was Dragon Quest XI, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC, and every single Kingdom Hearts game out at the time. That's 175 and a half hours of games right there, and I'm leaving out a good chunk of Golden Sun Dark Dawn in there as well. For followers, I was able to keep a consistent amount of growth, and that I'm happy with. Despite being all over the place in my game choices, I'm definitely happy to see people continue to show up and like the content. I managed to achieve a 40% increase in followers over 2017 and a 76% increase in channel views. Overall, this was an extremely good year on Twitch. All in all, I acquired 70 followers, 2,129 channel views off of 892 hours streamed and 38 games played. My average playtime was 28 hours 53 minutes and my average time to complete a game was 8.6 days. On top of that, I met a lot of fellow streamers and viewers who not only stopped by but continued to do so throughout the year and even subscribed to my channel. So special thanks to Smiggy Games, Soda Mister, Doomed Master, Narv, The Godfinger, Holy Man Bob, Rouge Angel, and Phil Photon for the subscriptions. And a special shout out to my main man Smiggy who has been subscribed to me since I got affiliate on January 8th, 2018. I also want to highlight some streamers that I myself have been enjoying on my free time. The Nick of Time was one I found relatively early on. He's a variety streamer who tends to play more action-oriented games like God of War and Destiny 2, although he has certainly branched out to other games on occasion as well. I really enjoy his personality as well as his gaming competence. He's also raged on stream from time to time and while that's not a laughing matter, I could not stop laughing. I know, I'm a horrible person. The next streamer I stumbled upon was Two-Face Gaming. One day Smiggy raided him playing the Darwin Project. I believe he had streamed for a few weeks or so before we found him. We saw those innocent eyes light up and ever since then I got to see him grow. He far surpassed me and made some powerful alliances with other streamers and he absolutely deserves the attention he's got. He tends to play fast paced, action oriented games. Specifically, he's played a lot more shooters than anything else such as Rainbow Six Siege, Darwin Project, and PUBG. However, he's also played God of War, League of Legends, and Detroit Become Human. I'm still waiting for him to finish that game, by the way. He has a very laid-back personality and he's very good with engaging his viewers. He's very talkative, an artist, and a really nice guy. The last streamer was Narv. Interestingly enough, Narv found me, not the other way around. He stopped by and chatted for a while one day, and then he parted ways because he lives in Europe and I stream at some ungodly time in the morning for him. But then the next day, he returned for who knows what reason. So, at one point, I decided to see what he streamed, and to my surprise, he played Legion TD in Warcraft 3. This was a game I really liked way back when, so I was very intrigued. And that's the long and short of it. He's exclusively played Legion TD in Warcraft 3, and when he doesn't, he's playing Legion TD 2. He's a very laid-back guy, enjoys a good Eminem song, and doesn't like bugs. He's been a very nice source of entertainment for me in the early mornings when I'm getting ready for work. And that's all I got for Twitch 2018. I'm still riding on that narcissistic nostalgia train and I'm very slowly discovering some nice corners of the internet. So with that said, here's my top 5 Twitch clips of 2018.
gosh, that was that was incredible. Oh man. Cover that. Yeah. Oh my oh my gosh. Yup. That is precisely what it is. Wow, you can you could see it real bad there in the corner. Ooh, ooh wee. Oh no, it's Star Fox. Star what? 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 Wait, it's actually Star Fox! What the heck? <laughs> What the heck? Oh my god, what? Oh I my know, god! I know that I piece anywhere. <laughs> what All the right. heck? Fair. Nintendo, what are you doing? Alright, fair. I did say Ubisoft Nintendo crossover and collaboration would be neat. And then have Todd God. come out and and start oh. talking about the stuff Todd talked about. But the only the only part we can talk about. Wait, wait. When it's my turn, I am going to run down and I'm going to see if I can throw a grenade up there. And if I can't throw a grenade up there, then I'm just I, I'm just going to be dead. I'm just going to be dead. In the stream and review 2017, we got to see a large spike in December due to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I mentioned it wouldn't last and it didn't. But that doesn't mean things didn't get crazy. As you can see, I got to ride the wave even higher, almost doubling what I saw in December. It was awesome to see this one game get so much attention and then see it spread out. What I enjoyed the most is, in 2017, I was hovering in the 300 video range during the second half of the year. With Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I've managed to gain 1,700 additional people on a monthly basis checking out my videos. Very happy to see so many people watch. And in case you're wondering, August was Octopath Traveler, Golden Sun Lost Age, and Graveyard Keeper. Following up on my future goals of 2017, I wanted to do some gaming discussion videos and I did just that. I released my Don't Stop Pre-Ordering video where I wanted to take a stance against the blind bandwagoning of anti-pre-ordering. I answered a viewer question about enemies leveling up and consulted my viewer base on their preferred video length. As a whole, these videos have been a complete failure as far as producing discussion, and in that regard, it's disappointing. However, much like with everything I've been doing, I had a great time doing them. So expect more of them. And sadly, to expect less of is my Learning to DM series. This was me trying to branch out with the content I had, and as with most things I had been working on, time becomes a very big factor. So I only ended up releasing two videos for the whole thing, but the third video is more or less done and just needs to be released. But because this is so far outside of the content I have, I haven't been putting the time it needs to finish it. That being said, I hit a big urge to complete the series in October. So in all of that, I plotted out the entire series, rewrote the unreleased episode 3, scripted episode 4 through 7, and scripted out episodes 8 through 13 to the point where they just need tweaks. I also changed the format in some ways. I'm talking about largely the same stuff and presenting it in the same manner, but the way I'm talking about it is different. Obviously, this isn't something I got around to finishing, but it's continuously on my radar as something to finish. And that's more or less YouTube 2018. As a last minute addition, I continued my Games of the Year series, which was completely unscripted by the way, with some valuable additions. I was very happy with how it turned out and it will likely be the format I use going forward. In the end, I found myself with 111 new subscribers, 45,363 video views, 897 uploads, and another good feeling. Another thank you to everyone who has watched or still does. This year, I hit a lot of milestones. I played games like nobody's business and branched out a little more. 
Notably, I increased the video quality to 720p 60fps and eventually upgraded that further to 900p 60fps. Unfortunately for the YouTube crowd, you don't get to experience the 900p goodness, but maybe support will, that be, will be available in the future. I did mess around with 1080p, but my internet doesn't like it too much and I like to balance the visuals and watchability on the Twitch side. Also in January, I reached Twitch Affiliate, which meant I could still do what I've been doing normally, but get bits and paid subscriptions to my channel. I didn't reach this goal using the most reputable of methods, though. I found out late 2017 that you could have one additional stream open other than your dashboard to give one extra viewer. And if the dashboard stream is open, that also counts as one viewer. So I rocked with two viewers for a solid two months or so, hoping that third person would stick around long enough for the affiliate requirement of three average viewers for a three month period. Yeah, I know, I'm a suck fool But the weird part is that it didn't even work. I averaged 2.3 viewers in all of 2018 and in October through December, 2.4 average viewers. But somehow I got affiliate anyways. With affiliate acquired though, I needed to make a big decision. If you watch my older stuff, you'd notice I went by the name DracoDragon09 on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. This was my opportunity to change my name to something that better fit and thus my World of Warcraft druid's name Axarod took over. Shout out to the Duskwood server. With this name change though, I lost my channel, all comments under DracoDragon09 got deleted, I lost my ability to rename my channel, and YouTube changed their monetization policy which meant I could not do that anymore. For reference, at the time the only videos that I monetized were my Learning to DM series and my Don't Stop Pre-Ordering video. The last few milestones I want to touch on are non-voice dialogue, overlay version 3.5, and E3. The foundation of my stream was always to create videos that I myself would want to watch because someday I'll want to watch them again. So this meant I wouldn't read dialogue that wasn't voice acted. It's less that reading is hard, because it is, but more because I absolutely despise watching Let's Plays where people read the dialogue and I loathe it with a burning passion when they do voices for the characters. It's an instant nope for me. But I guess there's a point in one's life where one should evolve or something. So I read all the dialogue in Black Sigil, which was a horrible idea. It was a long JRPG and I was reading for days. But you know what? I think I liked it. I don't do voices, I just read it. I can tolerate my own voice, I guess. So since then, I decided to keep doing it. Random fun fact about Black Sigil since I'm here. When researching this game, I actually couldn't find a single Let's Play on YouTube. Since starting the game, I stumbled upon one, but the fact that there were so few was really weird. Also, since I couldn't show all the random encounters that I could cut out on my thoughts video, I ended up cutting out 101 encounters, making up 42.67% of the game. Super impressive. Now do you remember my first intro and outro? Not the worst thing in the world, but I took what assets I had and used them. That sun? That's a 10 gigabyte AVI file that's a 45 second loop. Needless to say, I needed to get rid of that as soon as possible and began working on various overlay prototypes. Eventually, I settled on the slightly futuristic inspired setup I made for my Don't Stop Pre-Ordering video. I greatly enjoy the new look, but it's only a stepping stone. Eventually, I will want to upgrade it into something more spectacular, but it's a very low priority since version 3.5 works so well. If only I can get those squares to work branding-wise, I'd hop on that train right quick. Lastly, we reached the Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3. I had some desires to co-stream the conferences and I would have loved to do it with guests. I took a lot of inspiration from It Me JP's Drop Frame show and decided to emulate it as best I could. The guests were the hard part. I reached out to some people but most of them turned it down for a variety of reasons. However, Dante and Rot accepted the call and E3 was born. This was a greatly enjoyable experience and with luck, this can branch out into other things as well as continuing for the years to come. So huge thanks to Dante and Rot for hanging out. And that is 2018. It's crazy to think that it's been two years since this all began. Some great strides were made, some fantastic moments were captured, and some good ideas had. So thanks again to everyone who has taken part in all the greatness. I appreciate you taking the time to watch.